Okay, so the, <laughs> this is the big opus I was working on over the kind of a uh, few weeks ago. It's a, it's a, I'm not sure whether I've showed you this program before, Audacity. It's open source software, and it allows you to record music from uh, you know a microphone input or even a, a wire input if you've got something like a, a record deck or something like that and you want it to transfer a vinyl record into sound, you can do so via this program. Mm. And it's got um, tape recorder buttons like the old style cassette tapes. Record, play, stop, pause, back to the beginning, onto the end if you want to append stuff on the end. So it, it's a really good program if you want to sort of uh, digitize an old LP and you've got an old record deck. You could simply get the outputs from your record deck and rather than it being fed into the amplifier, you kind of put a jack into your um, laptop computer and uh, record it that way. Yeah. So yeah, um, where was I? Right, okay. Yeah, if you wanted to create a podcast, for instance, of just speaking or speech or a voiceover or something like that, you could do that. There is kind of a program on, on Windows called Sound Recorder that you can use just to making short sound clips. Um, but it's not quite as good um, as this machine because it gives you more scope to edit. Okay. These, just looking down, you've got a list of tracks here. You can see I have a multi-track thing, so it allows me to kind of put stuff over the top of things on here, yeah? Uh, and so I've put lots of different tracks on it. Uh, and some of the things are just copied tracks and I've slightly changed things on there to create the special effects. And um, so, you know, I'll just stretch that, you can see that the shape of one track. So this was the first thing I recorded on here, which was like a piece of guitar, essentially. Uh, let me just... Uh, so if I kind of stay solo, you can hear this. Can we hear that all right? Yeah, can I hear something? Okay. So a piece of guitar, and then when we put it all together, let's go back to the beginning then. Oh, oh, let's, let's just play this. And you can see that, that it's like a sound wave. This is the compression wave that's going through the speaker. So if we um, I kind of, I'll just before I play this, zoom up, zoom in here, view, zoom, zoom to selection. You can see that's what it looks like. I can even just get it, zoom in even further. Is this you playing then, or is this something that you've... Yeah, yeah, I played uh, played uh, yeah. guitar, I'll show the instruments I, uh, I played it on. Um, that's uh, you, zoom, uh, zoom to selection. Yeah, you can see the individual waveform there, you see. There you pod. That's just that bit, yeah, of what it would sound like as a waveform. Um, people might remember things in the laboratory where they had a, a, what we called an oscilloscope. It shows you the wave track of a sound speaker. So that would be like the analog equivalent that uh, um, Andy was Andy was demonstrating last week. If you hooked up an oscilloscope, you'd see this waveform when you're playing the sounds on the synthesizer. Okay, so let's just view out to view the whole thing. Okay, and if we go back to the beginning. And we'll just play it and let, I'll let you listen to it. It's about four minutes.
Very relaxed. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It has kind of coming effect. It was very relaxed. I feel like I was having my eyes done. <laughs> <laughs> eyebrow, eyebrows. <laughs> well, it's, <laughs> well, it's, it's kind well. of, um, you know, <laughs> a bit of a lockdown sort of thing, isn't it, really? You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. Um, as I say, I've, I uh, just... Uh, uh, I'll take the virtual background off here, I think. Uh, yeah. so we well, when, I, when I was watching that, I was trying to pick out the individual tracks. So, I, I guess uh, yes, uh, I'll, 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 come, I'll, show you, I'll show you some of the, the individual tracks. But the bass track, of course, is just one guitar, really, which was this one. Okay. Uh, on an open, an open tune. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it's not standard tuning, but it's a 12 string guitar, so it has a big sound, you know, and that's that's what I use to, for the sort of the bass track. So I'm not sure what other things do you think were in there actually? Do you hear stuff? Yeah, like somebody's singing, kind of. Does there sound behind? Yeah, and so yeah, the, the next track was sort of singing really, so it was using a, a me singing in a falsetto voice, you know, singing a high voice, and then I, there was some bits where I was singing low drones as well, uh, you know, and trying to use, um, you know, the way the Mongolian sort of uh, sing, where they kind of like alter the shape of the mouth to create different partial oh, yeah. so trying to do some of that really in there to limited success. But the thing is, I, I tend to sort of do these things in one take because I can't be bothered doing it again. And so some of them are not perfect. So I use a lot of editing rather than uh, a lot of uh, musicianship mm. on it, you know. Uh, and then there's some bass guitar in there. Uh, there is trombone in there as well, which was the, um, as I say, you know, when we had this conversation a few weeks ago uh, with Luke, sort of said, uh, you know, he was very ambitious with his cycling, sort of saying, he said, you know when you think you can do something, but you can't. And I sort of said, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't actually played the trombone for about sort of maybe 10 years, actually. And so uh, the lip is all over the shop. So it does sound very wobbly, doesn't it, the trombone? But it, it sounds beautiful, though, I thought, the, the richness of it. And I, uh, what I did to kind of create a richer sound, I kind of dropped some things an octave down uh, digitally. And so there's a lot of effects on the uh, machine that you can use to sort of drop, drop uh, an octave down and stretch things or chop things. We'll just go back to the um, the screen share again and uh, show you a bit of this. So, for instance, if we uh, just uh, uh, looked at these two tracks here and zoom in here. Uh, you can see, um, if I stretch them a bit, they're kind of a similar shape to each other, yeah? Mm -hmm. And they're exactly the same tracks, yeah? So these, these stereo tracks that kind of uh, were copied, and you can see that it's, I've just, what's that? It's about maybe um, a tenth of a second. So I've dropped, I've basically cut a slice of a tenth of a second out of one piece of stereo track. So it's double tracked it. So it sounds like two trombones playing rather than one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you can do these kind of effects very, very easily on digital. And it's something that kind of really does Kind of is a big game changer for uh, you know but when um, in contrast to what Andy was showing is where you were creating sound with patches and dials and having to create a particular sound. This you can use actual sounds that are created with other instruments or pan lids if you like and change them into something else very very easily. Um, and some of the effects I don't know do, do, do the menus can you see that menu on the screen now is it not yeah. showing? Yeah. These are all the special effects that are in the digital thing. Um, so you've got the graphic equaliser um, and you can change the shape of the tone 
you know, put more treble bass or whatever. Uh, and the other effect that is, is echoes. So there's a lot of things where I put uh, echo into things. So here, the way the echo works, it gives you the number of seconds or hundredths of a second or a tenth of a second and the percentage it delays. So this is saying after 1.37 seconds, it repeats at 30% of the sound. So you get a very long echo of over a second. So to create that effect in a, in a, in a space, in a hole, you'd need a massive room, a massive cliff face or something like a huge distance to create a one sec, one and a half second delay. So it gives you special effects that are kind of out of this world, literally out of this world, you know. Um, and so it's quite, um, you know, a composition tool really, you know, that you can, that you can use. Um, so I guess I guess you could also sort of input things like uh, sort of percussion, I guess, in there too, can you? So you could take a percussion sound, could you? And then you'd... yes, uh, I mean, I think you know you could use use drums. Uh, and in fact, when I when I kind of put this online, one of my friends said it really helped having a bit of percussion on this. He's a percussionist, so you know he's kind of good at this sort of thing. So mm. I was thinking like, well, what sort of percussion would you put in there? I'm not too sure, really. You know, it's not doesn't naturally sort of figure in the uh, repertoire. Maybe a but, triangle. Yeah, a triangle might sound nice. Yes, triangle, yeah. And in fact, I've got a glockenspiel. I wondered about a glockenspiel. Mm. So I haven't got a triangle, but I've got a glock um, that I bought from a charity shop for about three and a half quid. <laughs> 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 and so, yeah, it, you know, you collect these odd sort of bits and pieces. So, yeah, maybe uh, I might do another version. Um, you know, the big, the big balls of the buddies put... They pull a thing around, don't they? What they don't they call? Yes. They, that that might be quite nice in the background too. Yeah, gam gamelan orchestra stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I, I do collect a few odd, odd instruments. So, you know, like thumb pianos and things like that. You know, uh, and you know, you can just use them for a special effect. You can record one note and create something out of just one note, really, with something like this. You know. One of the other things it has is um, it's got a generate function. So you can use, you know, the, the things that you were using before, like waveforms and stuff like that, you can do on this. So if I um, went to new, uh, say generate a toad, it gives me different waveforms like you could generate on um, uh, your synthesizer. So mm. I've got the sawtooth, Oh, yeah. And the square wave, the pulse wave, yeah. Uh, and the sine wave, yeah. Yeah. So, so um, let me just, if I kind of put 440, that's a, an A of a tuning fork. Yeah. And it sounds like that, yeah. So, yeah, you could, you could build up completely new sounds by generating a note and um, building up layers, if you like, to create a synthetic sound. Um, yes, it's very, so it's very similar to the synth, isn't it? The way you, you, very you similar to the synth, yeah. 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 Same, with a, same with a bass note, then you, you're applying loads of filters and uh, oh, what's called the envelope generator. Where you, you're all envelope generator, yeah. Same, same sort of idea, isn't it? So, so yeah, I, and uh, you know, I, I did experiment with it, making sounds that were completely uh, Un, unnatural, if you like, and thinking about having I mean, to make sounds like that uh, by using it. And I'd never, I'd never figure out, never looked at that function until I did a class uh, for Leeds Autism, and I kind of let let the let the kids loose on this <laughs> thing. And then one of them was just playing with all these kind of ramp waves and everything. I'm thinking, oh, what what are you doing there? And he said, oh, I've never seen that function before. And so when I got home, I started playing with it, you know, so it completely showed me a, a new feature on the program that I'd never used before. That's, I think that's one of the things you got to play around with, don't you? I think if, you, if, if with it being free software. It is, it is free gonna... software, that's right. So you can, you can get this, download it onto um, you know, a Windows computer. I think you can get it a Mac version as well and you can get a Linux version. Uh, and you can really do all sorts of things with it. So, if you if you are in a music group or you're in a sort of a, a you know 
podcasting or stuff like that, or even just playing around with sounds and understanding waveforms and uh, a bit of science, a bit of physics. It's a very useful way of visualizing things, to be honest. You know, um, 